Okay. Welcome everybody getting started and recording this for anybody who, who joins us later. So today is a unique thing. We've done pretty much a first design sprint to um, develop the CEB press. So, so that is, um, we've got a workshop coming up on August 25th and 26th. So that's, that's on a calendar. Uh, we're producing a brick press for the University of Utah. There's a program there called Design Build Bluff. You can um, you can Google Design Build Bluff, but they're doing affordable housing. A lot of t a lot of times they work in uh, Native American communities, but it's a university team, and we're building a brick press for them. So they paid up. We're getting ready to cut. So uh, we've gone quite a bit far on the CB press already. That's our pretty much the best developed machine in terms of the most prototypes. But let's look at the working document. So working document is right here if you haven't uh, gotten in there yet so let's take a look at what we have what I'll do today is uh, so so we're gonna go for a long haul basically a working meeting where we do the actual work together so we can ask questions and move forward fast on it uh, that's the idea for today so that for the whole day it's gonna be actually six hours I'm gonna be on here so first three hours would be on a brick press and then the next three hours on the filament maker so uh, on a brick press there's a bunch of minor changes we have to make to the machine to make it um, to improve it uh, a few things we learned from last year and, and really getting towards just some of the last minor bugs that are being worked out in the machine to make it really um, even easier to build i mean the main change we're doing right now is the ease of build the new guide rails that we introduced last year make it such that the build can be more modular by separating the guide rails from it's this is technical details but what we have done is I'll, I'll just go right into the uh, the CAD let me share my screen um, so please take a look at my screen or just download the CAD as far as the CAD goes uh, I believe that's linked right up in the front of the document or it should be that is procedure for the sprint so download the CB press free CAD file open it up so you can also take a look at what what we're what we're looking at here uh, so let's take a look at it so this is the, the entire machine uh, I just want to describe let me, let me get the perspective view which is always better so here it is um, this CAD right here does not reflect what you see in the working document. Namely, what's going on? The working document front page shows a little bit of a different machine there, doesn't it? Uh, so from last year we've got these these um, linear bars the guides that are on top of the machine essentially not attached to the arms uh, that actually makes it makes the build much more simple because the guide mechanism for the brick press meaning these these one inch shafts and let me just zoom in a little bit on that um, but these shafts here they guide the drawer so the the brick press you put saw in on top you get bricks out but you have to make the drawer move back and forth. It's a soil loading drawer. You got to move it back and forth in a line so it doesn't hit the sides and that the such that the all the friction is on where the rods are attached to the to the drawer. And what we did here was use ABS plastic blocks as the bushings so that these blocks are sliding along the rods and otherwise the machine the metal on metal it doesn't really happen the the drawer which is heavy it's like maybe 75 pounds or 100 pounds um, plus yeah about a hundred pounds it doesn't slide actually on the bottom like where uh, it goes back and forth it doesn't slide anywhere it doesn't really make contact anywhere so it doesn't wear out because the guide rails are holding it in place basically suspended it's kind of floating back and forth in the machine 
So that's the idea here. What we did here is put the guide rods, one inch shafts, through the top of the frame here as opposed to before we had them attached to the arms. And there's a real workflow detail, build detail, with respect to extreme manufacturing, meaning the quick one day build that matters a lot when this redesign in the sense that if you had the the guides attached to the to the arms you would have to get the arms in first before you started working on drawer alignment what that meant for typical builds was that we couldn't actually run or you know test any of the alignment which is the main thing it's how the draw moves back and forth to load the saw we couldn't do any of that work until way later when the arms were on legs were on uh, so a later phase in a build so doing this allows us to not only put the build like the testing the the actual shakedown of the drawer while the frame is being built but also it allows when you decouple the drawer from the arms that's like it's good for modularity in a sense that um, it's a little tricky to explain but but basically if you make the drawer dependent on less other parts like namely like the drawer already depends on a frame right so if we do not add another dependence of the drawer to other parts namely the arms the 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 arm here what i call the arm here this is the primary arm and the secondary arms are the ones here but if you remove the dependence of the drawer on the arms it's a simpler it's like it's just more modular so modularity relies on any module having as simple a connection to the rest of everything as possible at best it's like one one is a good number like one connection point to an or like one other module that you're connected to and that's what's happening here technically speaking the drawer now dependence is removed any dependence on the arms is removed from the drawer um, and that matters a lot. Just trust me on that. If you look at the details before the actual guide rails were attached to the to the arms, total dependence on the arms. Okay, let's 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 assume that you accept that that it's um, that that is a fine deal. Uh, what we're gonna do today is is uh, update the CAD file and make some changes. So here. You see this assembly with this clamped sandwich and so forth, bolts, a Frankenstein-like contraption here. We want to simplify it and also move the move the holes, move the attachment down, uh, down and tighter to the drawer. So we'll move those holes down. So let's actually go through the the detail of what's included on the machine right now. So that's what we have right now. You see that last year we have been able to add those holes for the guide rods here. Okay, but Everything else is like the former machine, including, for example, those holes there. They, they don't need to be there. That's where the guide rail attachment happened before. Uh, don't need those. We got to get rid of that. Um, what happened here was also the other part about this is when you reduce, um, when you send the guide rods through the frame, you are able to before they were in between this frame between the drawer here and the frame here there was a space there in other words the frame was wider so when we put the guide rods into the frame itself we were able to shrink down the machine so it's more narrow and you see there's another artifact here uh, because the basically that space there that space opened up and that's somewhat of a bug because um, the machine right now is wider than it needs to be but we won't worry about this right now that's uh, we'll save that for another day uh, because that means like just about a lot of these other things would have to be changed as well but all we care about now is the so we narrow down the frame a little bit and then we have to modify the drawer in a few places so let's let's look at some of the details of what the modifications need to be and then we can actually dole them out according to an experimental workflow. Let's see if we can actually do that as a bunch of people because you can, you can divide that task into many individual tasks. Okay, 
So let's go to the details that need to happen. First of all, item number one, move rod holes down as far as possible. Okay, so that's one example. And, and let's, let's take a look at what the general workflow for today would then be. So one, you download the FreeCAD file. Number two, isolate just this. So let's go to the, to the CAD and I'm gonna flip this around to the other side. Um, I think, okay, let's get rid of that. Okay, so there we go. Um, move these holes down. Okay, so here what you do is you can double click on this and that's that's this uh, one of the frame pieces. Um, extract it. So whoever's going to work on that, so there's so we're breaking this down into text. You can you can extract this from the file, get rid of everything. Okay? So you download free freecad uh, the freecad file, extract just this, meaning you can either like copy and paste into a new document, and that's probably the easiest. So you do something like clone it into a new document. Just I think control C control V works if you go control C and you add a new page to this document and then control V and then you have to typically go into standard view fit all. Yes, it's right there. Extracted it. So now you've got just this and you can work with it. Okay. Now, this gets into some of the the FreeCAD issues that we talked to about before about reverse engineering. So here, unfortunately, this is not a FreeCAD native object. This was generated in a Libre CAD by Robert Rob Beddingfield, and he exported this into STEP format, and that's why we can import it into FreeCAD. But there is no underlying sketches. In other words, you can't change this. Sorry, you got to redo it. So what's the procedure there? You got to redo it. So let's let's start by taking, um, you know, you you can go onto one of the faces, like, bam, go here. Only thing you can do is trace it out. But you have to do exactly as it is here. Now you have to look at these very small details. And let me tell you about these details. These details are such that so first of all the assumption is this is all getting CNC cut like the entire frame CNC cut from half inch steel this is half inch steel so the patterns are exactly this 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 is a three-dimensional shape that's made from three half inch flat sheets that are cut out with CNC with our CNC torch table if you look at our OSC Workshops Facebook page, progress on that. The big axes for the CNC torch table are, are being made. But anyway, we have to trace exactly this shape. Um, so, say you go like this here, go into Sketcher, and then New Sketch, and put it on, you can put it on the face. Anyway, you gotta start a sketch and then just start tracing. And that's it. That's the only way we can do it right now. So, so let's see. So you get a, a multiple line. You can, you know, zoom in on that. You're very much zoomed in. I'm into. I'm on the polyline tool. Okay. So click. What's going on? Polyline tool. I don't know what's going on, but I'm clicking on the, and uh, the polyline tool is disappearing but we got to trace the whole shape uh, extrude that half inch so you make this this flat sheet and then don't do this hole put this hole all the way down how far keep these holes that they're they're all good this hole moves all the way down how far all the way down as until it hits basically this uh, until it can't go anymore meaning it right above the the half inch half inch above the the surface there so that's item number one so whoever wants to do it so and uh, uh, let me go through all the different pieces but basically trace it move the hole down extrude it and then rebuild this whole piece so you got to rebuild these other sides as well I mean that's the only way we can do it. we just simply got to rebuild it from scratch so 
that's a nice one solid task. Now, how do we get the DXF cutting files? Well, if you've got three of these, so the sketches are going to be, you're going to make this sketch for the front face, top face, bottom face, um, then you put them together. Now, the important thing is, well, so we're going to extract the DXF file out of that by exporting, going into FreeCAD export as DXF, so don't worry about that for now, but that will be the final step because then we get two-dimensional cutting files for CNC. One important detail is when you work on this file, don't move this thing. Don't ever move this out of place because this right now, if you were to merge it into this original document, it would appear in the same lo in a correct location. That's a big point. In other words, we can according to our general workflow, extract this part, put it into a separate document, change it in a separate document right here, and then merge back into this document. And then the update file will be merged into this document. So that is the workflow. And that's very important that you understand very clear about that. Extract it into an extract a part, any part that you're working on, whether it's now this piece or then it's going to be the drawer or any of these other pieces. Um, extract them into a single document, another document, and then in, not import it, but merge. Merge back into this original overall document as a FreeCAD file. So that's the workflow. Let's go to the next, next point. Uh, so we move the rod holes down. Two, add the rods. So this, a new person, another person can do that. So while this person is moving the holes, and you know you have to move the holes all the way to the top of this plate, so it just lays on right on top of the plate. And then whoever's doing this, this piece here, make sure you just save the sketches. So now at this point, the file becomes fully editable, and say we got to move the holes elsewhere, well, that takes a few seconds if the underlying sketch is there. Not a problem. Okay, so second person, add the rods. How long? 48 inches. Um, Actually, the length of those, that's, that matters by all means. I mean, if you look at this machine, they're, they're a particular length. For all the dimensions, I have a folder. So in, on slide number, uh, number 10, in fact, we should move it up way up, pictures folder. I have a picture with all the dimensions. So if you go into the pictures folder, You'll see a bunch of bunch of files. This is uh, pictures I just took of the machine, which is standing out there uh, after a year of not being used. Uh, but you can see all the dimensions. So, so look. Let me just click on one. Okay, yeah, it shows this. But there's um, there's pictures with actual dimensions, like uh, the ones with the tape. Um, so let's take a look. See the tape measurement. Where? Where? Um, and for the rods, just to point you to the rod length, that's this is this is the one here. So it says 21 inches, uh, 21 inches long, and 21 inches is measured from the face of the machine. And then there's. Um, if you look at the other one, so so the rods basically stick out one side, 21 inches on the side that's sticking out, and then there's another uh, picture, probably this one right here, that shows the dis the distance to the other end of the rod sticking out of the machine. So um, I think they're 48 inches exactly, but but uh, basically they they're out to one side here and then out to the back. And I have two pictures as far as how far they they stick out, so get that measurement. But in, you know, at the beginning, just uh, draw the rod in there, uh, approximate length. But get get the measurements after that. So okay, so that's item number two. Put in the rods. And note that the rod making and this hole making can be simply independent. I mean, once um, the rods have to be in the right place, and we know the position of the rods, and we know where the holes have to go, so move them down. But at the end of the day, they just uh, uh, they're independent because you know FreeCAD doesn't understand that the rod is going through the metal. You can stick the rod right through the metal and then move the hole to to match that. Um, one more detail here. You see, there's like 
inner spacer block right there underneath there um, so if you look at the machine from the very front let's let's look at orthographic view and the other way think this way uh, let's see is that the right way no it's got to be this way Yeah, I think that's the one right here. If you notice, so this view right here, you note where the, there's a spacer inside there. Um, so the end question is, ignore it. So that spacer there, we need to remove that because the rod is going to go. That spacer there actually blocks the soil from g going down around the sides of the machine there. But once the rod is moved down there, the rod will function as the soil block. That little spacer there is a soil block. Uh, so we can actually get rid of that little spacer there. So the hole moves actually straight down, not around this this half this this piece that's right there. It doesn't go around it, it goes right through it because we're going to remove that soil block there. Okay. Um, so there you go. So that's that's number change number two. Change number three, so a person can do one of these. So change number three is design the actual rod holder. So the actual bushing mechanism, I mean the key point, um, as, as if you look at the what I mentioned about this Frankenstein looking device here, we can simplify that. So if the rods move down, then we can use like a simple um, 3D printed bushing with a, with a brass bushing inside of it. So we can replace that. The, we have a lot of metal, a lot of bolts. What we can do is put the, the bushings kind of straight right onto the top of the drawer there. So get rid of this entire big assembly. And how do you do the... This is something like a, I would say Emmanuel does this since he's good at this stuff. Um, I would say you take this one on because you're kind of good at this. But the, what this would be is... So we've got this 3D printed bushing. There's the hole for the one inch rod. Inside of it is a is a uh, that that one inch brass bushing from McMaster Car. And if you're gonna get that bushing in, that bushing has to be held in there so it doesn't come out. In other words, what that means is that this structure here is gonna have to be a clamshell. In other words, that that 3D printed piece is gonna be split in half so that you can put the bushing in there and then the rods in there. so you couldn't insert the bushing without uh, taking up the clamp just like we have on a universal axis carriage so the cool thing here is we're basically combining like the same one inch universal axis which I'm just prototyping here that same mechanism is going to serve as the bushing here so the same part same bushing same shafts one inch shafts so this is like reducing the part count of the overall Global Village construction set. But anyway, as far as this, there's going to be a metal plate on top. Why? So that the bolts, if you, if you tighten it down to the dra drawer with the bolts, it's not going to wear down into the plastic. The plastic is soft, so you need washers. The easiest washer would be a, a simple metal plate that has two holes in it. And there has to be a little play in the bolt holes and the bolts should be one inch industry factory farm standard one inch bolts uh, so we're not playing around just simple one inch bolts um, so it's really stiff I mean it could actually I mean it's I could accept three quarter inch since we're using three quarter in the machine as well but this this machine pretty much uses three quarter inch bolts throughout uh, so actually three quarter inch would be acceptable in fact preferable because we did one inch shafts one inch rods here uh, sorry one inch bolts because we needed that uh, but that added an extra part count so if you go to three quarter we already are using three quarter bolts in this so just keep it to three quarter that's that's actually better um, therefore if it's a three quarter bolt inside a one inch hole that will give us uh, the requirement of having a little bit of wiggle room to make adjustments so that's what I would suggest three quarter inch bolt uh, bolt for attachment so that's the concept. So design this, and then after that, put it on a drawer. So so that's it. So that's uh, change number three. Change number four. There's more changes. Um, now this 
this cover plate on the frame here, so this is right here, that bar there, um, it's actually a little problematic in the sense that uh, that bolt hole there, it's really hard to get into that to, to screw things down. You, you would only be able to do that with a socket wrench. So I just know that from experience, it's a real pain to take this off. Um, so shorten this reinforcement bar to that red line on both sides so that when you do a regular wrench, you can actually screw this down without requiring a socket head wrench. So that's, that's a good little change. But that also means that um, if you look at the detail of that, um, so if you look at that, that's the bar I'm talking about right there. Uh, this bar. Let me just see something here. Okay. What you see here is the drawer. You see like the drawer is in parts already, so that's actually pretty good. Whereas other parts like this, this plate here, if you click on that, the whole thing disappears, so it's not in parts. But anyway, the, the detail on that is that this bar has a, um, a hole in it. Well, this plate here has a hole in it that the bar goes into, so it's located automatically, so you don't have to measure. So there's a locator hole for that. So that locator hole would have to move over to... Uh, just move over left because it would not exist anymore. So do a small locator hole like right there, but don't make it go inside the chamber. Uh, so make make like a one inch, I'll, I'll just draw that in as a little square in there. Um, but we need that locator hole, it makes fabrication easier. In Japanese that concept is called pokayoke, where where you use the use different things that are features of the machine that prevent the thing from being built the wrong way. So basically make that notch, little notch in the plate happen like right there instead of there since that's going to be cut off. So that's a locating hole that this front piece snaps into that uh, that hole, puts is, goes into that hole and it's welded after that. So those are the the two changes required there. So two points. One is shorten it and two is move the locator hole. Okay, next, change number five, change four. Uh, so let me get the numbers correct here. So change five, uh, on a drawer, we get, need to get rid of those holes, okay? Uh, why? Because that used to be for when, when the, the guides were mounted to the drawer, we don't need them anymore. So change number five is get rid of those holes, one on each side. So that hole and the other hole, which is here, close it up, but make it go one half inch in, so once again we have polka yoke, meaning that it's located automatically on the drawer. And to give get more specific on that there, now uh, you'll see it, you'll see it on the machine, I won't have to go into it. But basically you need to do that one inch indent, uh, but not get rid of that hole. That hole is also a danger, if, you, if your hands get in there, you chop your fingers off. So if you close that hole off, you can't chop your fingers off anymore at, in this feature of the machine, if, you, if you're in there. Okay. Change number five. Change number six. Get rid of the eight holes on the sides of the, the drawer. And then also add. So add the three inch hole. Notch the cylinder side. So so not there's this, this notch here. Why? If you look at the pictures of the machine, you see that's how we mounted the... Um, we're going to have to mount the bushing hold, the, basically the guides to the top here. So we're going to put a bar across here. And same here um, but don't worry about that yet we're gonna worry about that so first make the change like that that hood will have to be added like a little additional space for the basically for the the guides for those 3d printed guides are gonna have to happen here but but the first let's go add uh, get rid of the eight holes and add a three inch hole here uh, don't worry about the notches for now let me just um, format that strike through that that's for later now this three inch hole here is what happens there with a the cylinder attachment. So let's go to the, so the cylinder attaches there. Um, the deal is, let's, um, it's actually like the way it works here. The, the pin is just a little too long to get it in through the side. Like it's really hard to get it in through this space here. So that's why we want to put these three inch holes, large holes on a side so that we can put the, now it's easier to put in this this pin for the cylinder 
because right now it's really hard to get that pin in there. We just need just like a little bit more space here. So that three inch hole will be aligned with where the, um, yeah, it'll be aligned, it'll be through this here, like it'll be right there aligned with where the pin is for the cylinder. So that's, that's that. Um, next item. So that's six changes. And then how many people do we have here that can do stuff? So we got two, four, six, eight people. So who, uh, so do people want to just take this on? Uh, Emmanuel, I suggest you do the bushing. Uh, you want to do it? Uh, yeah. Uh, can I show you something? Yeah. Uh, make is uh, life a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, we can extract. Uh, the lines of some object. How how is that? Okay, uh, uh, let me. I, I was doing that that right now, so I was not paying attention. But let me share my screen. Okay. Really fast. Uh, share screen. Okay. So I can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Uh huh. So I, uh, you see? Um, yeah. Do you see this? I got, let me do it again. Uh, so let's take this object, control, copy, control, three. Uh, so I, I'm clicking on this uh, face, go to draft object and press that. You see the arrow? Yeah. Goes down. Yeah. So I just press it and I have faces. It, it, it uh, converts. Converted the, you know, extracted the face of this object. It did? So okay. So I'm trying to find which face we want so it looks a face 7. Uh, we can hide everything else, but let's just move it. We have a face. And it can get even better if you. Wow. Just a again, face? A flat face? If you do that again, we got the wire. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, but so is that... Uh, huh. Uh, so, now, ideally you could... You see the wire? Uh, yeah. Now it's a lot easier. Uh, ideally we could use that button uh, to make it a sketch right away. Uh-huh. But uh, it makes me an error. I don't know what's why. And so, I just... Huh. I have trouble. I just did it right now, so... Oh, wow. I don't know if it's worth it to, you know probably solving this, but anyway, it's, it's a lot easier. Okay, but I can you prefer, now... I would prefer to go with the face, not the wires, because if you use, if you go with the face, it's face number seven, where is it? Oh, uh, give me a second. Uh, so, with the face, you can do, because that tool doesn't work, uh -huh. with the face, you can press here, go to the sketch, uh, and create a new sketch on that face and then use, you know, the extra de geometry and then go and, uh, you know, press on every... You see what I'm doing? Yeah. Press on every, So, you actually are creating the, the sketch manually, but it is an oh, exact wow. position. Okay. So, you see, I have the lines already. Oh, excellent, excellent. Okay, look at that. Um, and then you can just convert it to regular lines. Uh, so, sorry, I was not pay, paying attention to anything else you said. Okay. Good well, luck with that. just the one thing is, so... Uh, but if, uh, if someone can get over from here, it will save a lot of time. Anyway. Yeah, that's no, exactly, exactly. That's good. So, but the only cons consideration is for mergeability. If you move it, then you move it out of the correct position. So, can we just erase? So, do get the face, but erase the object underneath. So that's what I would. Then we go back to you know to uh, the standards. We should use assemblies anyway at some point. Uh, we do the job for now because we want actually the, the DXF. This is what we want. That's why we're doing that now. Yeah, but we also need to have the, the correct 3D model so that we can fit the other parts. So there's two things. One is the DXF, 
and two is the fact that the entire model fits so that's why I was emphasizing the workflow that when you generate the part generate the part in place and it'll make I, your life much easier otherwise you have to every single part of this model will be imported and will be constrained ideally yeah. it's not the way it is right now right so i don't know if you're going to somehow to do it later yeah don't worry about it yet first we got to get the correct parts because then if everything is constrained uh, whatever change we do, it will still be in place, and we can still, you know, constrain where it should be. What but is anyway? The... Whatever you want. Yeah. No. I mean, for now, we got to generate the parts. How do you get it? Uh, if you can answer this, how do you? If you constrain it, what do you mean by it actually will be in place? If you change it and merge a replacement part, what happens to all those constraints? Like, like, okay. So take the drawer. You drew up a new drawer. The drawer is currently constrained. You imported, not imported, but merged a new drawer in. Um, how do constraints help you? I don't uh, see how that helps I, for that specific I case. Know. I wouldn't use the meds. I would use the, the, the assembly, the import of the assembly. Because then you have the part list also. Uh, uh, I, I tell me more. Videos, you're suggesting the meds, uh, but the way I would do it, I would use the assembly and import it. And how does just wait? How do you import an assembly? I mean, you can importing if you only have this assembly two workbench. Yeah. Say, and I'm say let's. Uh, can you show an example of how you import something? Yeah, yeah, I will show you some right now. So we have the model. Let's say this one. Uh, no, let's do something simpler. Uh, Let's take the leg. Yeah. This thing. Yeah. Control copy. And control the. But we have a we have a leg in another in a document. Yeah. Let's save that. Save uh, leg. Let's say leg. So back to the original. I'm, I'm deleting this. Okay. Go yeah. to assembly two. Workbench. Import. Leg. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Show the, show the slow motion of the import. What are you? Uh, what exactly are you doing? You go to file. Sorry, I will do that again. I'm, I'm All the legs are the same, right? Yeah. So uh, we have the original, you know, model. Go to assembly two workbench. Okay. Uh huh. And then the first button import a part from another FreeCAD document. It's a box with a. You see my. Is this version 16 or uh, point oh. 16 or point 17? No, I'm not using the daily. I'm using the regular. I, I have it on the daily also. But okay. So, okay, this is actually really good. So that's import part within assembly two, and then then you're gonna import that identical part into. Show, show yeah, an example how it works. Right now, I'm pressing the import. Uh huh. I don't know, it happened and it imported here, so I will import another one. Yeah, but hold on a second. Is it imported like that because the the coordinates were correct already in the other document? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. So, look, I import another leg. I, I need to import four legs. Okay, so you see. And let's put this leg. So then I go and use the constraint. One... Using two faces, one. Yeah, you see now uh, it, it moves this object instead of the leg because the, it hasn't. Uh, you know, I, I'm starting out of uh, of an already made object. I'm not using the regular, you know, work path. But this is the how it's done. You need three constraints for three constraints for each object. You see. And then the height, another one, we put the third one. Oh, sorry. Uh, this face with that face. And then if you want to uh, to adjust the, the offset, you know, or mine. 
moves. Uh -huh. But this happens now, you should, the, this bracket moved because it, it doesn't know which one is the first one. Right. So, so you then I can, you know, can get and not this constraint to, to the leg here. Yeah. So you're saying so, that, okay, how many constraints do you need to, you say three is typically enough? I mean... Oh, or yeah, absolutely, three, because three planes. Uh, okay. So okay, so three... Now I have two. I put two more. Oh, and so you're saying that if you put the constraints in the final file, then when you import something, it's going to go into the right place? Uh, I'm saying that later on, if you want to follow that route, uh, the final assembly starts with an empty file, completely empty file. And you import the first object, and the first object has, you see, a fixed position here. It has a true value. Yeah. All, everything that will be imported later will have this value false. And everything else will be constrained according to that first object. And oh. nothing will move around anymore, uh, like you know, like right now. Uh -huh. uh, but so and so, so what happens next to have that button parts list? Uh, that, okay. Oh wow. Uh, so if you have sorry, if you have a dimensioning, you don't know, have a a page. Uh, okay, let's do that. Sorry. Um, sorry about that. Uh, if you have a page, then you can use the um, second uh, parts list, and it will show you. Uh, it will add the, all the parts that are imported to the final assembly. All right. Uh, but we are out of focus now. <laughs> Wow, so you can generate, so probably like this, this would be the workflow for eventual bill materials. Also, if you could add, add links to there somehow, generate a whole spreadsheet. So that'll be, we'll develop that later. But yeah, that's good. That's good. So you can actually generate your parts lists. Very good. Uh, yeah. I think that's okay. the, uh, how it's done to the, you know, to the pro professionals. How, how yeah. They, yeah. Okay. So that'll be the professional way. So for now... Uh, given the file that we have, we want to change a few parts, so that's good to know. Then we can do j just what I suggested, which was just to copy it and copy copy the part into a new document, retain its position, so that uh, when you when you merge it back into the original document, it, everything remains the same. And that's uh, that to me sounds like a relatively uh, easy to understand way to do it. Um, and I think we can get more advanced later when we do the full constraints, but that kind of gets us into, yeah, I think it's a little more sophisticated to understand the constraints, but it will be something for the advanced levels. Um, yeah, so there's a different, different way. Um, see, so Roberto's saying, <laughs> assembly part of non-constrained assembly. Yeah, for now, what's the what's the best way? I mean, for now, since we're extracting just like individual parts, then um, just merging it, say, put it into a new document and then merge it. That's one way to go if we're doing just a few of these parts for right now. And then what we'll do is uh, after this is done and built and everything is verified, I mean, because you, you see, the thing is that we're still making little changes here and there. So we haven't gotten around to the final, super final CAD and free CAD. And that's besides we only started using FreeCAD officially really since the beginning of this year. So we'll do that later on. So for now let's um let's see, let's let's go back to the list of items to do. So can we um divide and conquer here? So um can we have people do the different tasks? So so let's um li our list of people here's here's um Here's our list of people. So Emmanuel, can you um, can you do the guide, uh, the new rod holder instead of this whole mess here? Um, who wants to go next? Who's gonna take? 
So there are the five different things. One is the fr couple of things on a drawer, couple of things on the the plate, and one thing on the... Can, can I do the first one because it's the only one that I was paying attention? Which one? The, 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 the first one you showed. Uh, item one? Yes. Uh, item... Where is the change number? Uh, change number one, yes. It's too easy, man. I think we should we should have somebody else do it. How okay. about let, let me explain it? Uh, no, this page number seven. Let me share my screen. Let me just let me just go through that again. I think you can pick it up. Sorry about that. Yeah, I can do it. Show me. Right. Do this. Read through this. So this is a, this is a new holder. Instead of all the bolts and mess, there's this 3D printed piece with a bushing with a metal bar on top and bolts going into the drawer. So this is it. None of this Frankenstein mechanism of those three bars and bolts. This is just these 3D printed pieces with a bu with a bushing inside. So basically think of this as the the carriage for one for one bearing uh, essentially. And this is going to bolt down to the top of the So if you got the machine here Instead of having that whole assembly, you just get one of those bearing blocks for one each each uh, point of the of the rod. So there's four points: one here, one there, and then one on the other side and other side. They're attached to the drawer. So for now, you can just do that holder in general, and then we'll put it into position on a rod once the rod gets put into place. Can we share your screen? Uh, I'm not sharing my screen. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to press that last button um, okay once again number seven so this is the bushing 3d printed it's got a it's got a brass bearing inside of it just so it's got the stiffness there it's a little brass piece the rod goes through it 3d printed with two holes and a metal metal bar on top so that when you put the bolts in which bolt into the frame the bolt into the the drawer then the bolts aren't crushing the plastic because that's going to be down pretty solid. And there's a little bit of adjustment. The hole for the bolts is like one inch. The bolts are three quarter. So you have like one eighth inch of play. So we can adjust this back and forth. And we can put spaces, spacers underneath it to get the exact height because that's going to have to fit the rods exactly. So we can adjust a little side to side and a little up and down. Now why I did the, the reason for doing the bolts in general there was because it could be fully up and down adjusted. That's why I did that whole contraption there because that was an easy way to do it, but it's just too much work, too much work there. And it's too tall, like that, that attachment is too tall. We want to move it down, so yeah. Uh, you think you got enough, Emmanuel? Uh, yeah, let me look on that and I will ask you later. Yeah, go so. ahead. Okay, who wants to take number number one, just moving the holes down, generating the new new place, new thing, and then putting that back, merging that back into the original file and uploading that to the wiki so the the file cb press the way we want to work here don't be shy about uploading new versions all right um it's actually a zip because um it's much smaller like the zip is about 1.9 meg the expanded file and just take a look at that number why so that we can all do that properties the full file once it's expanded it's like five megabytes. That's why we're saving the zip on the wiki. Yeah, it's five megabytes for the full file and zip down to one. So as soon as you, like for step number one, do that, change the, the actual CAD file, merge it back into the project, upload to the wiki. Who wants to do this? It's gonna take one. Come on now, who's who's gonna do it? Um, let's see. Um, Will, is that a good task for you? We need some volunteers. First one. Sorry, I had to step away for a second. For the first one, yeah. Um, don't be shy. 
The first one, yes. Um, uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna just be helping people. But um, or how about Israel? Since you're right there, I'm gonna go through this. I'm gonna start putting arrows here. Israel, you think you could do that? Okay, go ahead. Next one. Um, how about Will? Can you take the drawer top? Roberto, drawer side. So side of the drawer. Does that sound okay? Okay, sounds good. How about Will? Okay, drawer top change for Will is going to be... Yeah, change number five. Get rid of the hole in the cover of drawer. Upload to the wick. So once again, for everybody, Memory is cheap. Do this, upload it back to the wiki so that the next person that downloads is going to have the correct file. So this is this change number five. I'm going to give Will. Is that good? Sounds good. So I'm going to put that number on this. I'm going to say Will change five. That's number five. Um... Okay, Roberto is, that's the side of the drawer, so that's number, let me see here, yeah, that's number six. Marcin, do you have a, a, any close picture of that? Yeah, it's, uh, everything is uh, in the, in the, um, so slide number two is the pictures folder. Go in there. Okay. So change number four for Abe. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Shorten that. Shorten that support bar. Move that locator polka yoke hole over, but not into the chamber space because we want to keep that space as clean as possible because that hole will reach to the other side of the metal and it will have to be very smooth. That's where the bricks get made. We don't want to interfere with that. So keep that little hole um, r to the right enough that it's just... Yeah, you can you can make that red line actually like make it like right there, right there. And then that little hole is one inch um, so it doesn't go into the chamber. Okay, and once again, do the change, merge back into the document, upload the final file. So everyone's uploading. I want to see a lot of uploads, but zip it first. So it's one meg. Yep. So change number four for, for Abe. And that is gonna, I'm gonna put the arrow towards the, it's down there, it's actually that bar over there. Okay. Um, let's see, Roberta's got number six. accounting here so so change number three is a manual
Yeah, so Israel's got change number one. Now change number two is just to add the rods and then upload that into, once again, to the final file. Uh, who's going to do number two? Just add the rods. Zip it and merge it back into the original file. And then length of those rods, how far they stick out on each side. The measurement I did in the pictures is from where they come out the wall, where they come out the, the side there side of the machine uh, because that's what I could measure uh, who wants to do that is that a part for Christian yeah okay Let's get Christian in on the show. He's not even on the map here. Uh, Christian number two. So two is uh, just add the rods. Once again, merge it, zip it, upload it. So Christian is the, um, you know, actually drawing the rods, so I'm pointing to the rods. Uh, Io doesn't look like he's here. And I guess. Um, Alejandro and Antonio. Yeah, so Christian, you're just adding the rods. Then merge, zip, upload. Um, and let's see what's. Um, Let's see, slide number 10, that's, that's Roberto, right? Number 6, yep, yep, so that's a few holes in there. Um, what else is there? Massim, you say, my thing, there are four of these? Yeah, there's four because there's four four points where the rods are attached. One, I mean, one on each end of the rod. There's two rods. Oh, yeah. Okay. And the pictures show the one that you want to design, or is, it, it looks different. Okay, so the picture shows the one that we were using last year, and the CAD okay. is different than that, slightly different. That's why we're updating the CAD. The CAD do not have it at all. No, it doesn't have it at all. The CAD doesn't even have the old rods and the old mechanism. Yeah. So I'm asking uh, the ones from the pictures. Yeah. Uh, they are different from the ones you're going to design, right? Well, yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. Yeah, we're redesigning it because of that complexity. So basically replacing all, all those bars and all those bolts with just these these blocks. That are held down by two bolts. Yeah. Yep. And uh, if we do that, we're pretty good. Then the last step is, of course, to generate DXF files, but that's we'll worry about that once we have this all. Now, then the only thing is, it appears we've got a few people unemployed, like Joseph. Um, let's see. Uh, last question. <laughs> uh, yeah. On page seven, um, are there two pieces? Yeah, because you, to put the the bushing inside, you need to split it. Because the the bushing is going to have to be held in place with stops, just like our carriages. Okay. Right. 
Yeah. You, you know what I mean by stop, right? So the two pieces would be identical, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think so. They can be identical, right? Yes. So you've got a little stop in there, right? So that... Oh, you want some stop so the bushing does not go... Right, so out? the bushing doesn't fall out. you got to make the hole big enough for the bushing, but then close down, so... Kind of like that, right? Yeah. And do you have any dimensions, uh, not not from the hole, general, you know, from from one side to the other, it doesn't matter. Um, no, it doesn't matter. It's as tight as possible to have enough to get the one to get in the the three quarter inch bolts, and on the other to hold the bushing, the length of the bushing, which is I think like one and a quarter. So make it probably like, you know, enough of stops so that those bushings don't fall out. So give it enough, give it like a quarter inch of, of plastic on each side. So the bushings, yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, okay. Let me think here. Yeah, the bushing is, uh, I mean, that's like the critical part because depending on, as soon as you have that, then we can actually attach it to the drawer. But we have to make a second modification to the drawer top, which without doing the bushings, we can't do it yet. Oh, but there's one, one tiny change which we can put as a separate item and just basically have a person go through that workflow is to get rid of the soil blocks what I mean by that let me strip the machine down to show you what those are it's related to the rod rod thing but those things this one and this one here those pieces need to go Oh wow, and that's interesting because that piece is connected to the whole arm, so that's not a small task. <laughs> you see that? That little piece, that piece right there, has to go. But in order for it to go, you have to <laughs> separate it from that whole thing, which is not done. So that's a that's a task. Uh, so we need a person on that. Now, how do you do it? How do you separate for a joined object? How do you separate it? You can take a Boolean cut out of it. That's one way I know. Um, you basically draw something in its place and cut it using the, the part workbench. If you go to um, part workbench Let's see if that would work. Yeah, part workbench has those Boolean operations, meaning you can subtract shapes from one another. I think that's the simplest way to go there, unless somebody else has any other comment, but that block needs to be removed for a technically correct drawing, because that block is going to be replaced, the, the bar, the guide rod is going to basically go there, like the circle of the guide rod is going to be like right there and right there. Um, yeah. And that that block there is basically preventing saw from going getting between the the frame and the drawer because there's a little space there actually between the frame and drawer. So prevent dirt from getting down there and piling up and actually over time burying the entire machine bottom. So that little block there was important, but now we're going to have the bar which should do the job. Um Okay, so we're going back to the document and the seventh person, seventh task is that. Turns out not to be a tiny task. Uh, so, so slide, duplicate slide, change seven, get rid of whole blocks, the soil, soil blocks. Um, 
um, so go into the CAD document, I'll show it there. Um, now, who can do that? Okay. Uh, sorry, I got bumped. That sounds like a getting rid of the saw block sounds just like the perfect task for Joseph doesn't it? or am I mistaken? because uh, it looks like Dixon is also looking for employment um, Wait, where's uh, Dixon? Is not even on this one for some reason either. Um, I mean, there's there's two of those salt blocks there. I mean, one just to divide it and conquer it. One on each side, just divide that up in half. Joseph and Dixon, how about that? Can you guys do that? And it's, it is almost the same task, but both of them have to be done, and each one's going to take take uh, just a little bit of time. Does that make sense or no? Okay. Then Joseph is the only one that has not uh, provided feedback. Joseph. Yeah, so so Joseph is wetting his pants a little bit on the on the free cad, but <laughs> let's see, is this something that can be handled? I you know that's um it's not an entirely a yeah. Why don't you guys do that? I mean the thing is you copy and paste, double click on a part, copy and paste, and then go into the yeah, I mean, let's actually, 
document that on a certain page because that's that's a common task that we'll be doing a lot of times like a useful thing to do is if a part is a dead object that you can't modify but you just want a little simple change then you can um, you can do various different things one thing I think you can do is also yeah I don't know how it works but I can see two things one is just going to part part workbench and then draw a, a cube like a flattened cube and then move it over into the position of that that block and then subtract it using the boolean operation uh, this part here run a boolean operation with two shapes selected so you select both of those shapes and then you just simply say subtract and then the the saw block will disappear and the thing that you put over the block can be just a big cube that that eats up that little block so wait let's see um so you take you basically take arm minus cube and whatever cube that cube spanned over that that saw block it'll just eat eat that saw block away so let's document it that's a common common very common uh, way to do things and the other way that I could think of right now is to do a sketch on that pad, on that soil block, and make a pad, not a pad, but a, but a pocket. So draw a pocket on that, um, basically on that pad. I don't know how that's going to look. I think probably both of those work, and I can maybe try that. Uh, or maybe you guys can, yeah, you guys play with it. Um, okay, so let me let me write that down as change number seven so I'll write a little procedure so a general procedure for getting rid of certain features because I know that you can do things like like do pockets or holes and even in dead objects dead meaning they're just step imported files so they don't have the sketches they're not FreeCAD native If anyone has any questions, please scream up, and I'm here to support everybody. Um, and guys, if you want to open up Jitsi, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you can run Jitsi and Google Hangouts at the same time, I believe. So you can silence mute yourself here and talk on the Jitsi. I think that works, and let us know if that does. And Christian, go ahead, let me know. just talk because that will go quicker um two questions i, I actually don't remember the uh, rods measurements anymore so um maybe you could give them to me again yeah you have to look at the the rod measurements <clears throat> were there as well on the, on the last page yeah in the document they're on page two but you have to look at the pictures and you have to identify there's a couple of pictures where i show the tape measure going to the end of the rod and that measurement is taken from the face of the frame to the rod so that's all we have it's about 21 inches from the face so but take a look at the pictures folder see if you can identify those and um, so so we should also put a note here Uh, length of rods. What what um, what page is it on the? Page number two page? has all the a link to all the pictures. Uh, ah, okay, okay. Sorry, I was looking at the bottom pictures, the slide. They weren't helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
and and the other thing is um my, my class will probably be the last because i have to wait until i know the exact measurements of the of the holes is that correct no the the point was the opposite we can paralyze it because um move the rod i mean the the hole's going to be moved but that's equivalent to moving the rod too Th those tasks don't need to depend on each other you just do it just move it to the bottom as far down as it will go on that piece so uh, okay yeah and displacing the soil block which another person is getting rid of that's Dixon and Joseph they're getting rid of that so basically what we're doing is we're doing all these steps and they don't necessarily I mean that's the beauty of it with pa parallel workflow you don't have to wait for, for one to the other because there's multiple people doing them right now and that's the way you can compress time but because uh, you know you know what's where that rod is gonna be we are just declaring we're gonna put it down as far as it can go right and yeah. that's that's the point and then once we get the the actual guide holders in place after Emmanuel does them, he might have some considerations where we might need to raise that those rods a little bit up or down. But that's just changing one parameter on the rods. So that'll be easy. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's all. Yeah. Can yeah. You hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, step four, I'm looking at the CAD, I have it copied over. The red dotted line, okay. Are you... Yeah, that's okay, what I'm. So I was trying to see if that the new tab and hole should be moved. Um, I guess it's the furthest. I, I didn't know if there were welds on those tabs. Yeah, anyway, yeah. We'll... So, yeah, okay, we're welding them. There, it looks like the furthest in it should be moved is then planar with the outer edge of the chamber uh, those green pads yeah it could be inner because as long as it's not re going past it yeah so maybe do okay. that because the only consideration there is don't make that tab go into the chamber itself which starts at the red line yeah so that okay. the face is smooth welds on that that might get in the way or yeah, I mean, we're going to grind it down. So we're going to weld it and then yeah. grind it smooth. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'll shift that to the inside then. Yep. Okay. That's good. Thank you.